Hello and welcome to Caregivers First, a show brought to you by SCAN. SCAN is a nonprofit agency dedicated to helping active adults stay informed, empowered, and inspired. I'm your host, Lynette Whiteman, and I'm the Executive Director of Caregiver Volunteers of Central Jersey. Today, I'm going to be talking about resources and support that you might not really know about. My goal is to let you know about what's available and how to access it to make your caregiving journey easier. My guest is Jerry Gavin, who spent many years as a caregiver himself and now is the manager with the company Care Connect America. Thank you for joining me today, uh, welcome. Well, thank you, thank you very much for having me today. Yeah, so tell me about your life as a caregiver. What, what was that like for you? So, you know, as, as I know so often we talk about when you're a caregiver, you sort of don't identify that way, right? We, mm -hmm. You think of yourself as a son or as a daughter or whoever, right. but um, my journey began with my dad who had liver cancer and that was maybe one of the hardest things because he actually passed away in the hospital because my mom was so afraid of bringing him home and mm -hmm. being able to do things like that. And um, I later learned when my girlfriend's mom was passing away about hospice and services like hospice that were available. But it was when my mom came down with Alzheimer's and she lived up in Hoboken at the time. I was publishing a newspaper group in New York City. I really kind of learned the struggles that caregivers go through because you mm -hmm. have a parent who wants to live independently and they, 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 they feel as though you know everything is fine and yet mm -hmm. at the same time you are kind of watching those debilitating things that are happening as somebody is dealing with Alzheimer's and trying to figure out what am I going to do mm -hmm. and eventually my mom did come to to live with us and um, we went through quite a, a journey in trying to find out what were the services that were out there, what to do, mm -hmm. and that was something I kind of committed that if I ever had the opportunity to move into the healthcare field, I wanted to figure out a way to get that information out to people because mm. it was such a hard thing to find. Mm. So this was sort of like your personal mission to, you went through it, how could I help other people yeah, go it, through it as well? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Right. Um, when I was at the newspaper group, we started to publish caregiving sections and mm -hmm. you know that was something that was happening in Manhattan and I felt like I knew Manhattan and what was going on great, but right. then when I came down to Ocean County, I knew nothing. Right. <laughs> so it was a whole different kind of a, um, you know, a right. set of circumstances. So being both a personal caregiver and now like professionally working in the field of caregiving, what would you say are the top three challenges that you see that caregivers are facing that there's ways to impact it, that there's things out there now that could help. What, what, what would be your top three? Well, it's, in, it's interesting to talk about that because not only is it the top three things that caregivers are finding themselves dealing with, but um, I did a trade show recently in New York City and we were, were talking to case managers from all of those hospitals and they were talking about the top three reasons that people are getting admitted to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And the major things that they're dealing with are situations related to falls, um, related to medication mismanagement, where people are taking their medications incorrectly. But the interesting thing, the third thing, and, and I had no really idea about, was isolation. And mm. that isolation is just becoming, it's not only something that, you know, about loneliness and stuff, but um, there's a statistics, AARP, mm -hmm. through their foundation, said that the physical toll of isolation is even such that it's like the same as if somebody was smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Mm -hmm. It's that same kind of right. physical toll. So those are the three most pressing things that that, that, um, that yeah. caregivers are dealing with. So let's start with falls. Um, I know that falls are, are just devastating. You know, mm -hmm. That changes everything. Right. You know, mom, dad falls, breaks a hip, goes into a nursing home, goes into a rehab place maybe comes home, maybe doesn't come home after that. So as far as falls go, what is the what is the intervention that that you could recommend to caregivers or, you know, people worrying about this? So how, how do you help that? So this was one of the reasons why I got into the, the work that I'm doing right now, because one of the problems with falls is that when somebody falls, it changes your life, it changes yes. your thinking. Because as soon as it happens, the chances you're gonna have another fall 
are even greater because mm -hmm. now you are worried about falling, yep. which means that you're going to change how you're walking. Now you're kind of shuffling. We, we see that all the time. Yeah. You might go to the mall and you see somebody shuffling because they're afraid to be lifting their feet up and down. Yep. Or even more importantly, and this then starts to get into that area of isolation, you stop doing those things. Mm -hmm that you did before and there are just so many things that are that are available you know there there was a time years ago when there was that first commercial that we all know oh I've, yeah I've i fall and, and i can't, can't get, get up, up right? right that talked about having a pendant and, uh -huh. and basically that was about being within your house but people are active they do a lot of different things now and what most people don't realize is there's there's actual um GPS technology now. There's there's these little things that look like a um, like a cell phone that can go in a pouch, and you can have a pendant that you would wear with that. You can even have a watch band that has a button right on it, so that if anything happens, you're able to to notify someone. And that's that having that ability to know that you're not alone. That if something occurs, um, my yeah, my boss um, has this great quote where he says that one of the goals that we have as a company is to help people to live on their own but to know that they're not alone, mm. you know, so mm -hmm. that you have that chance. So you can touch that pendant. And by the way, many of those pendants even have built-in fall detection. Ah. So, you know, if you should fall and by any chance you couldn't get to it, you can actually be notified. It still will notify the call center. Ah. And being that these devices have GPS technology built in, wherever you are, the call center can let emergency personnel know, or they can just talk to you directly and make mm -hmm. sure you're okay, and right. that, that gives so many opportunities for people to huh. be able to, to take care of themselves. So if a caregiver is looking into getting it, and it's called, like, I know a lot of times it's called PERS, uh, right. the Personal Emergency Response System. Right. Um, if a caregiver is interested in purchasing that for their loved one, or they don't live close by or whatever, are there certain, is there a wide variety of of, I know there's a lot of companies that offer it. Right. Is there, what should caregivers ask? What are the important questions that they should know before they commit to one, one system or another? Well, I, I think that's a great question. So one of the things that you want to think about is the, the purpose for, for the unit. So if you have a loved one who is dealing with a chronic health situation, but they're almost always in their house, they mm -hmm. don't get out a lot, or if they do get out, they're always with somebody else, they may just need a home-based system. Mm -hmm. You know, they might just need something that has a base unit and, you know, would be able to have the watch or the pendant for the house. Certainly if they are not, even if they're in a house where they may go into their backyard to do gardening mm -hmm. or go out to their mailbox in the front yard, for those purposes, they would like to have something that, that has more of a mobile mm -hmm. technology involved in it. Um, you don't have to have a landline anymore. It used to be in order to have those units, yeah, yeah, even yeah. the home-based ones, you had to plug it in. Right. Now there are cellular-based units. So all of those units, whether it's the cellular, cellular unit for the house or those that you're carrying around with you, um, mm -hmm. those all kind of have their own cell phone number. Okay. And that's what identifies it when it's, right. when it's being able right. to come through. And I think some people are a little concerned, like, I don't want somebody barging into my house. Or right. I, I know we got one from my mom, and they will call me first. Mm -hmm. And then, the, you know, then they call my mom or they say, are you, you know, close by? Do you want to go home or whatever? Right. Is that something caregivers should ask a about? Absolutely. Yeah. You, a, a caregiver has the opportunity to kind of set the protocol with the call center. So everybody, for example, um, I would say look for a call center in which the call center personnel are EMS trained mm -hmm. because then they know how to communicate with EMS personnel. Mm -hmm. I would say look for a company that provides lock boxes um, for no charge because that way if there is an emergency where there's no response on the line, it's been activated or that person is getting information that leads them to believe this could be a stroke situation or a heart attack or uh -huh. something very serious and they, they're going to want to dispatch before they would call you at that uh -huh. point. They're, so even if somebody, so somebody has a stroke, they fall, or they, but they didn't press the button because they had a stroke, that still could be perceived by certain systems? If, they, that's, they if that system has fall detection, by okay. all means, no. by all means, that fall detection is going to trigger. It's a really kind of complicated technology that, that has, you know, um, a method of telling both the velocity of the fall uh -huh. as well as impact. So oh, okay. that way you're wow, able to know. Uh -huh. I know that yeah. there's, there's so much technology. And, and, and I think maybe that's one other point is 
I would look for a company that doesn't necessarily own their technology, but is always bringing in new technology as time goes on. Mm -hmm. Because we see all the time, technology is changing like mm. every single day, something better is coming out. So you want to be doing, you, you want a company that's going to come to you and say, hey, we have this brand new technology that's even better than it was before. Right. You know, there is a new technology coming out in a few weeks, which is actually a, a watch that looks exactly like a watch, and yet it has built-in fall detection and huh. a number of other things. So, Great. You know. And I, I just want to mention, um, for people, because I know these things, they're a monthly fee or whatever, mm -hmm. that, you know, if a caregiver can't afford it, um, is there resources that some a caregiver can call um, that might have not such a high tech system, but at least something, some sort of peace of mind that right. might, you know, be. You it, can. So yeah. definitely, I would reach out to the the area office on aging, your county area office on aging, because mm -hmm. many of them have grant programs. If you're not able to afford a per system, that you might be eligible. Um, a lot of counties operate respite care programs, and so it actually is. That's actually being done for the caregiver. So the mm -hmm. caregiver is actually able to get around and do things and take care of stuff while they have the, the security of knowing mm -hmm. that that person has it. Um, it also can be paid for by Medicaid if someone has okay. Medicaid. Um, so there's a lot of different options. Options to do that. And um, do, does your, uh, does Connect America, do they um, get involved at all with, um, as far as falls prevention, making recommendations as far as not having throw rugs or household sort of tips like that, or, or it's more the technology part of it? It's more the technology part of it, but one of the things that we do is we do partner up with a, a lot of different organizations. So some of the folks who, who may be referring us for the PERS technology would be those people who would be coming in and they're okay. making home modifications and right. doing things of that nature, or vice versa, that we would be referring them. Oh, good, yeah. Um, often an installer may notice something when they come in and do something, and so they'll they'll let people right. know. Because I think there's a lot of simple things that people don't sure. think about, you know, just a throw rug or certain lighting or, mm -hmm. you know, just little things that could trip somebody up or, you know, just a little step that doesn't have to be a step that could be evened out and right. stuff like That's that. True. So That's it seems true. like it's like a holistic approach of, of, of what of, of taking this approach. That's great. Um, the second thing that, that you mentioned is the medication management. Right. And um, we're, we're almost going to a commercial break, but we're going to talk about it more then. But just before we go to break, tell me a little bit about Connect America. And, and we, you mentioned it, but what, what, what does that company do? So Connect America is actually the, um, the largest independently owned company that provides PERS as well as um, telehealth devices. And by telehealth, health what that is is remote health monitoring devices that we can check the vital signs for people you know their their blood pressure their oxygen their weight you know even dongles that'll check their uh, glucose monitoring and things of that nature so those are the two major health divisions within the company great um, so you know we're yeah and you're you're throughout the United States we are throughout the United, United States. States we serve about 300,000 people wow. um, who are currently subscribers Wow, that's awesome. All right. Well, we're going to um, we're going to go out to a commercial break now. That was excellent information. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and when we come back from the break, um, we're going to continue to talk to Jerry and we're going to get into the second major thing that we're worrying about and that's medication management. And I know that's a major issue for people also, especially as people are getting into dementia and getting more medications and nights and all that sort of stuff. Right. And that's a major concern for caregivers. So stay with us and we'll be right back after commercial. You probably already know that rehabilitation is a must for successful recovery from surgery, injury, or serious illness. What you may not know is that you're free to choose where you go for rehab. In Monmouth and Ocean County, the compelling choice is Care One. Where you choose to go for rehab matters and with Care One, you have four convenient locations to choose from in Monmouth and Ocean Counties. Care One at Jackson, Care One at Wall, Care One at Homedale, and Care One at King James in the Atlantic Highlands. At Care One, you'll work with a team of experts to develop a plan based on your needs and goals. You'll have the full support of caring, compassionate physicians 
RNs, licensed therapists, and nutritionists dedicated to helping you recover successfully without setbacks at a pace that makes you comfortable and successful in meeting your rehabilitation goals. Once you take the first step with us, you'll never look back. Call 877-99-CARE-1 today and come for a tour. Welcome back to Caregivers First. I am your host, Lynette Whiteman, and I'm having a really interesting conversation with Jerry Gavin from Connect America. So Jerry, right before the break, uh, we talked a little bit about um, the second major issue, right. and that is medication management. So tell me a little bit about what is out there to help caregivers that can't go over every day and put the pills in or make sure mom's taking 8 o'clock, 12 o'clock. What, what's out there for caregivers to help that? So there's different styles of medication management devices. I can speak best about the, the one that we utilize, but essentially what it is is it's, it's a wheel that allows you the opportunity to dispense up to four doses of medication a day. Okay. And how it works is... Um, it has, it's interesting because it has two different kinds of technology. It has almost like an old-fashioned alarm clock on the device itself, uh, but then it also is tied into a web app so that uh, caretakers can know when their parent or is taking or their, their loved one is taking medication. So essentially, um, and it can be done once a week or if it's somebody takes medicine once a month, it can last a whole month. The medication is put in the device, it's closed up and locked, and then the times for when that dosage is set into the machine. When it's time to take the medication, what will happen is an alarm will go off like an alarm clock. A light will flash just in case there may be difficulties with hearing as mm -hmm. well. And all the person has to do is open up the little door, just slide the door open, take the medication, slide the door shut, and then it will automatically then advance to the next medication. Mm. The positive sides of this is that this is also hooked up to either a, a landline or it's, it is its own cellular unit. And if for any reason your loved one is not taking the medication, you're going to get a notification of that if there's a medication that's missed. You can even track it where it will show the exact times those medications were taken, if there was any lag in between, any mm -hmm. of those different kinds of things. That's incredible. And it's a really great thing because, again, you know, the products are there for the person who's needing the help with doing it, but really it's there for the caregiver as well, because yeah. otherwise there is that, and I remember myself, that constant worry. Mm -hmm. Now, for, for my mom, my mom had this system where she would take her medication and she would put it out in these little uh, dishes yeah. in, in order to be able to take it, but then she would forget about taking it mm -hmm. from the little dish, and she might take it later on. and maybe her midday medication she was taking in the morning and mm -hmm. vice versa. And there were, were multiple times we had to go to the hospital because of her taking too much of one medication, uh -huh. not enough of another. And right. when you're getting into medications like blood pressure medications, particularly heart medications, you know, that can get really, right. really dangerous. Is there any um, system where, so the little door opens, right, mm -hmm. but the person but you don't actually know if the person took the pill because they might have just opened the door, but the pill's still there, right? So if they open the door right. and close the door, then the pills are still going to be there when the person comes back in to, to fill it up. Okay. It will automatically advance itself to the next, next dosage. Right, right, so right. you're going to you're going to know if they right. did wind up missing that. Okay. Um, there are other options and other ideas uh -huh. for, for pill dispensers. This is the one we've just had the most... Um, success with because it's one of the most simple methods to be able to right, use because you want to make it very easy for the caregiver right. or if someone has a home health aid for the nurse to be able uh -huh. to take care of and you want to make it very very easy for the person you're caring for to be able to do and to just slide open that door and know that's my medicine that I take now right, right. makes it a whole lot easier yeah, yeah buy some time right. um, there I know that there's a lot of pharmacies right now or companies that are pre-packaging medication mm -hmm. for you so they'll like give you, do, would they fill something like this or they, they wouldn't go? Uh, We're actually in conversations uh, with a couple of those companies to try to figure out if that's something that we, yeah. we might be able to do right. or, or if that's something that a caregiver would be able to do through a combination of the 
pre-packaging that would just make it easy to right. to know this is here, this is here, and, and whatever right, right. combination would be. Great. Um, the 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 challenge with pre-packaged stuff sometimes for for seniors in particular, or somebody who who might be going through if if. Um, if there's there's shaky hands or something mm -hmm. for mother, it's it's just being able to open, open those it. packages. Right, so right. that's that's one of the challenges you face. Okay, so let's go to your third top issue right. for um, issues in hospital, and and I'm so glad you mentioned this because it is it is getting more attention in the press. It hasn't in the past. People just thought, oh, you know, the person's lonely or whatever. But right, it is right. a true health emergency. So let's talk about senior isolation. And is there any solutions? that you have seen or technologies that help in this area as well? So it, it's interesting in a lot of different areas. So I, isolation, um, I have, I have a, a very good friend and colleague, Dr. Hannah Lerner, who's an audiologist uh, in Thomas River, and she does this great talk where she talks about senior isolation because of hearing loss. Mm. And that, I mean, you're kind of getting at the core of things just to start with that, you know? So if someone has a hearing difficulty, they're going to become more isolated mm -hmm. because of the fact that they're not hearing what other people are saying. So maybe they would go out to a restaurant before, but now it's not fun anymore, so they're not doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they're not a part of conversations. So certainly that's a really important thing, you know, just to to try to bring your loved one in to get a hearing test and find mm -hmm. out if there is any difficulties and if that's something that might be able um, to be done to help them. The, the other products that we've talked about, like the full detection products, those really help because now you have that ongoing voice communication with someone. Even, even if you've pressed that button because you're not feeling right but you're not absolutely certain if it's, an, if it's a a true emergency mm -hmm. that you need to go to the hospital for, that technician, that EMS trained technician is going to talk with you for a while. Sometimes it's anxiety. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a situation where you just need to know that, that somebody is there. Mm -hmm. Very interesting fact. So I, I mentioned we have over 300,000 people that we serve. About 100,000 people actually will push the button once a month, you know. Just but of that, we only dispatch to the hospital around 8,000 people, mm. which gives you an idea of, of how that is assisting in terms of, of the role of isolation. Yeah. So that's, that's one of those aspects. Um, there are some other great products that are out there. There's a, a, a woman I met from a company called uh, SocialV, and they have a great new app that they have designed, which if you look at the tablet, it looks as though the tablet just has like a family picture on it, but you touch on the face of your family member and it will automatically set you up with a video chat <laughs> in order to be able to, to talk to that family member. Uh -huh. There's a lot of other new technologies like that that, uh -huh. are, that are starting to, to take place. Um, I think as time goes on, we're going to see more and more technologies like that that mm -hmm. are geared towards being able to to keep family members together. Yeah. And I know we're we're always looking at new technologies right. to to do that too, yeah. because the more contact you have with someone, the greater the possibility that you're not going to feel that that right. sense of yeah. social isolation. And I guess as the ba baby boomers are aging, mm -hmm. they're they're so technology oriented already that it's not going to be scary for them to use this technology. It's just going to be part of their lives and it's just going to be one more thing for them to learn or figure out, but it's not going to be scary. Yeah, yeah. I think I think yeah. that's really true. Yeah. I think the, the the next generation of boomers that are coming through, it's going to yeah. be a little bit easier so far as, as technology is concerned. Right. Um, you know, now the challenge has been, you know, trying to, to do it at the current time and right. that's why the more the more simplistic you can make that technology, the easier right. it can be, the more likely it is that, that people are going to be able to use it. Right. You know? And also, one of the things too, I know I found with my, the situation with my mom, and I, I, to any caregiver who's out there, I would urge this. Um, when s no one wants to feel like they're a burden. And so a lot of times I, w I have done trade shows where people will come up and they'll see PERS devices and someone will say, a senior will say, well, I'm glad I don't need that yet. I'm glad I don't have to have that particular thing or I'm not in that situation. And I think they're thinking of it in that sense, but not necessarily from the point of view of the, the caregiver, caregiver who is basically saying, can you help me have that peace of mind? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it's a paradigm it, it, shift, right? It is yep. actually a paradigm yep. shift because I know there were a lot of things that my mom did 
for me uh-huh. <laughs> as yeah. opposed yeah, yeah. to me doing, doing it for, for her. her. Right. So when I was able to say, I know you don't need this, but, but it makes yeah, me yeah, yeah. feel so <laughs> much better yeah, yeah. in order it's to be able approach. to know that, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it can make a very big difference Absolutely. when you can do that. So what's the best way? There's so much information out there. There's so many websites out there. What, As far as a caregiver looking for this sort of technology or PERS units or medication, what resources, what advice do you have for caregivers to find this stuff? So I, I would always say what, whatever you're doing with your, your loved one, the first thing you want to start with is safety. You want to make sure that they're safe. You want to mm-hmm. make sure that you know, you're dealing with those three issues of, of falls and medication and isolation. Mm-hmm. Those three things kind of being put into some kind of perspective is really going to help. It starts a lot from the condition that a person has, you know, that they're starting off with. If someone is elderly, you can be able to get tons of information from an area office on aging. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a there's a great organization called the Family Resource Network that offers caregiver coalitions. The United Way has caregiver coalitions throughout um, throughout the state. Um, uh, your great service, Caregiver Volunteers, mm-hmm. offers so many wonderful services in addition to, to volunteers that are there. I think the first spot is to be able to identify what it is that you're most looking to, to find mm-hmm. and then to, to reach out to that place and, and grow your, your inquiry from there. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I know, I think my 800 number mm-hmm. is, has been up on the screen. I'm going to say it again. So okay. it's, it's, I always forget it. I'm okay. sorry. It's 800-722-7011. So it's 800-722-7011. For any reason, if you're a caregiver that is in the midst of the beginning of this journey mm-hmm. and you just have a question about where should I go, I have so many connections in so many different places. I would be very happy to talk okay. to. So that eight hundred number that gets to you, then then they could say, "I want to right. talk to Jerry." Yep. Okay, that bounces right to myself. Okay, so okay, you're gonna, okay. You're gonna be all able right. To reach That's you. wonderful. And certainly, any yeah. questions that you might have about PERS, you know, mm-hmm. or um, or medication management, um, there are just so many services out there now that weren't there mm-hmm. when when I was um, dealing with this. There are visiting physician services that will come right to your house. There, right. are, there are physical therapists that will visit you right yep. in your home. Yep. Um, you know, occupational, occupational therapy. x-rays, yep. yeah, all everything. kinds of things, right. you know. So, right. yeah, there's lots of wonderful right. services, and um, I would be happy to put you in contact with any of those. I think one, one more thing to add is, and this is what I found working with caregivers, is don't wait until it's an emergency. Don't wait right. until mom or dad falls, or don't wait until mom or dad, you know, took all their medication at eight o'clock in the morning. Because it takes time. None of this is going to happen the next day. Mm-hmm. When you call an of- office on aging or something like that, you know, then somebody comes out and meets with you, and you need financial information. So the uh, on that, you know, one caregiver called me and said, "Look." I'm not going to need you for about five years, but I want to get the information now. I want to know what you do. I want you to know my name. And then when I call back in five years, I want you to know it. (laughs) And I was like, wow, so (laughs) smart. But really, just be proactive. You know, that's one of the things. It's hard to do, but if you can, be proactive. I I agree with you. And I think also the other aspect of it is it's sometimes so hard. And I know from my situation, it's sometimes so hard to not be in denial yes. about what's happening because you're so used to that parent being the person yes. who's been taking care of you, and yes. and and now you're shifting in, in yes. that situation. So it's very important to not be in denial about Absolutely. it and start to look at it as the as the possibility yeah. that, that this yeah. is what's occurring. And as yeah. you said, to be be more proactive, proactive. and look at those Perfect. things to keep everybody safe. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jerry. You just gave You're out welcome. wonderful information for people. I really appreciate uh, it. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for, for having me here. Yeah. And uh, thank you all so much for tuning in today to Caregivers First. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned some helpful tips about how to keep your loved one home and safe, and maybe some tips about who to call for some resources. And now it's your turn. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what's on your mind. So please call, scan, or email us and send us your show ideas and feedback. And I just hope everybody out there has a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks. Mm